<laughs> so I get, if I'm minting videos, like, how do you how do you prove you made a video, right? I made it. I made it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, it's it's there. It's it's, it's obviously been made by somebody. <laughs> but yeah, I thought it was interesting. Uh, I'm gonna um, work on bridging probably this week. See if I can bridge my moment with Polygon and then sell them one of my moments. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. See if I can do that just to mess around, like, because I wanna I wanna start uh, exploring these bridges and like how things, how you can bridge different tokens to different networks and stuff. Because I think that would be pretty beneficial to us down the line. You know? Yeah. Yeah. What have you been working on, man? Um, you know, not that much, actually. Uh, like I said, I, I, I took a, last week I took a vacation, in a sense. I mean, I was doing other stuff, but like, I don't know. Every now and then, I, I take um, a good, healthy break from like, posting and working on stuff and just, I don't know, do nothing. In a yeah. Sense. <laughs> I've been watching a lot of the shows. <laughs> Like I, I watched, yeah. uh, oh, I, I haven't finished it, but um, Obi Wan Kenobi. Uh, that was. Good. Oh yeah, you're watching that. Yeah. Uh, are you watching the movie version? Or are you watching the little shows they made? Yeah, the series. On, uh, like yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, that's supposed to be really good. I wanted to get into that, but I didn't know. Uh, yeah, it's, it's it's pretty good so far. Um, I think I'm like on the third episode, but the, right away they have like Dark Vader, which is pretty cool. Oh. <laughs> like, they, they didn't even mess around. They're just like, bug. You yeah. Just, you just bust out Dark Vader just, just like that. Like, okay. <laughs> no build up. Okay, gonna... let's go. Let's yeah. get crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Like, like there's this one scene where Obi's Obi Wan Kenobi, because he's like, um, like all the Jedi's are in hiding, and then he's like, like the the Empire is like, um, you know, like kicking indoors and trying to look for him, and then Dark Vader shows up and he just starts like, you know, killing people with the Force, <laughs> just like just randomly, like, <laughs> just throwing them around like ragdolls. <laughs> it's pretty cool. <laughs> nice. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah, I miss the old Darth Vader, man. <laughs> uh, I don't remember the game name, but I used to have this game on, I think it was PS2, where you just, like, it was a Star Wars game, and you were a Jedi, and you just ran around these, like, different little maps, and pretty much fought other people that were Jedi on the different team and shit. Okay, it was really yeah. fun, but I was always Darth Vader. Yeah. <laughs> always Darth Vader. No, I, I remember playing on like uh, I think it was 64 the um, that Star Wars uh, game, and then like you do the, it was like off of the the the, like, the one at the time. So like it was you you would go on like um, those little races with Anakin Skywalker. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Uh, my kid just got. Yeah, he was mostly like flying the different vehicles and like doing different weird things. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, my kid's playing uh, a Star Wars game on Roblox. Okay. And it's pretty cool. Like I've been uh, helping him out with it, but it's kind of like the Lego games. Have you played any of the Lego games? No. So like, you go around like this map or whatever, and you collect blocks, right. and then you have to build your character with these blocks so like if you want to okay. be darth vader you have to collect the blocks for darth vader and then go and build your darth vader and then once you build them you get into that like thing that you built and become that character and then have their abilities and then you can go around and collect more stuff and more blocks to build like he has this whole little like world with like a castle and he has like five people that he's built in front of his castle that he can just like get in and out of and become <laughs> okay. that stuff. And, like it's really interesting. Like, yeah, I thought that was pretty neat. Like I was like, oh man, this this game needs to be more mainstream, man. I don't know why it's so small. This is crazy. <laughs> but it's a pretty big world. Like most of those games that he plays on the little Roblox are just like small kind of personalized worlds but uh -huh. this is a, like this, this world is pretty big like we haven't like gotten to the end of it yet oh so. that's cool 
we're still exploring it and having fun but he loves it man uh, he's back at school now so like he doesn't get as much time on it yeah. stuff, but like he loves it and uh, we just got him we, we got him his uh new i don't know it's, it's a computer yeah it's a computer but like it's, it's a touch computer that looks like a tablet okay. really like it, yeah like it yeah and like so like it has all his school stuff on there and so like he can go on there and play his school games or like do his homework and stuff like that oh, it's yeah. pretty interesting so like he's 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 finding things on these little school apps mm -hmm. to play like all the games that are in the school yeah. apps. He knows exactly <laughs> where the games are in all every school app. He knows where the game. So <clears throat> that's always fun. I think games, you know, games are a great way to teach kids. I yeah, like totally. Oh, totally. uh, well, uh, I was listening to this one podcast like on, on the road trip. So I went looking for some kind of philosophy to help me understand what games were. And I found this incredible book, Bernard Suits, The Grasshopper. And this is from the 70s. It kind of got lost for a while and then refound and became kind of a cult favorite. And Suits offers the following definition of what it is to play a game. He says, to play a game is to voluntarily take on unnecessary obstacles for the sake of making possible the activity of overcoming them. Suits is really interested in the fact that when you're playing a game, you're trying to get some end state. Like if you're running a marathon, you're trying to get to a particular point in space. But we don't actually care about being at that point in space in and of itself, or we would take the easy way. We would take a lift, take an Uber, take a shortcut. What's interesting about games for him is that you have this thing, the finish line, but it doesn't count unless you did it under specified constraints. It doesn't count unless you follow a particular path, unless you did it for a marathon on your own feet instead of a bicycle or a taxi. And that the fact that the activity would lose its value if you didn't do it in the specified, inefficient, constrained way, that for suits points the way to what games really are. And the way I think of them sometimes after suits is that games are constraint-constituted activities. Does that make sense? That what it is to run a race is to do it inside a certain set of constraints. Like what it is to climb a rock uh, in rock climbing is to do it with your hands and feet and not like a jet pack or a chain or a helicopter. So whatever is valuable about games has to be in the fact that they're constructed struggles. What I end up thinking is that what makes games special is not just that they create a world or an environment, but that the game designer tells you what abilities you have and what obstacles you'll face, but most importantly, what goals you'll have. So the punchline in the book is that games are the art form that works in the medium of agency itself. What the game designer is doing is creating an alternate self for you, an alternate agent, describing the skeleton of that agent, saying, here are the abilities you have, here's what you're gonna care about. You're gonna care about the points that you make by getting the ball through the basket with these people, and you're gonna care about beating those other people. And you can just take this on. And this is one of the most interesting things to me about that this reveals. But then he started like going into the, these weird like board games that he's into. Probably the most interesting board game for me that's come out in, a, in the last few years is Root. It's by Cole Whirl. It's from Leader Games. You can buy it right now. And I'm going to make this sound really weirdly intellectual, but I, let me just say that Cole Whirl has a designer diary where he explains how the idea of this game came from his like graduate studies into Foucaultian bio biopower. Okay, Root is a completely asymmetric game where each different position has totally different goals and totally different mechanisms. So Root is supposed to capture like a political power struggle, but it does it with adorable theming. It's like woodland creatures fighting against each other. So one of the possible positions is the Marquise de Katz, and the Marquise de Katz is like a bourgeois industrialist. So they play this very classical, familiar resource game where they're like making buildings to get resources, to make more buildings and expand and make money. Another position is called the Woodland Alliance, and they're obviously like the communist underground. They're trying to spread across invisibly, get the sympathy of the people. They're really weak at first, but every time anybody else like punches down on them, they get more sympathy points and they can explode. And then another position is called the Eerie, 
E-Y-R-I-E. They're like the warhawks, right? They're supposed to be birds. And the Eerie plays this incredibly interesting and bizarre game where every turn you have a plan and every turn you get to add one or two actions to your plan and then you have to execute the whole plan right? In order. So in the beginning, it's great because you can keep adding more actions. You can do more things. You can do more things than anybody else. But really quickly, you get stuck on your plan, right? You have this plan. You have to execute everything on it. But a lot of the things in that plan, you put in that plan like 15 moves ago. They make no sense. And so to fulfill your plan, you end up having to like run around doing completely bizarre, incoherent things just because you said you would. Whenever I play it, I think about like, I made those campaign promises and I got voted in, so I'm going to fulfill those damn campaign promises. And another position that you're playing actually is an arms dealer that's trying to make money by fermenting conflict and like playing the sides off each other and then selling arms to them. And what's really interesting to me about this game is that everyone actually has a completely different agential outlook. Like one of them is like focus on resources, another on disruption, another on these like warlike campaign promises. And when you play the game and you rotate through, you actually get to experience this really complex political struggle from different agential angles. And the more you rotate through the position, the more you start to understand how weird and complicated and emergent the political struggle is given different people's motivations. And so like, you got to do a lot of stuff in the beginning of the game, but like you were like a slave to your, your plan. So like later on when there's a lot of different activity, like the plan doesn't make sense, you know, (laughs) because because like it made sense like five moves ago, but not sense now in the game. So you're like you're forced to do things that are like counterproductive because like because one of the restrictions is like you're a planner. So you stick to the plan, you know, (laughs) Right. yeah, (laughs) which I thought was pretty, pretty funny. Uh, it was pretty. I wish I remember. That. I could probably look it up again, but uh, I forgot the name of that game. Um, yeah, yeah. I love it. strategy games are always the best. Yeah, yeah. I always like strategy. Games. Hell yeah. Like I played Risk. Uh, I like played Risk. Yeah, I did. That's why I was just about to mention Risk. Like, <laughs> yeah. I just got. I just got addicted to Risk again. Like, oh yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, because they have uh, I have it on my phone, uh-huh. and uh, so it's you can play with anybody online. Oh, and, cool! Like, so you have uh, and they have like different risk maps on the game. So like, oh, you can play the standard one where it's like the whole world, you know, yeah, like yeah. your standard board. And then they have like you can just play where you're just in the U.S. or you're just in Russia or just in Europe, oh, or you okay. can play. A mixed board where like all the continents are just shuffled randomly around and placed on the map. So it's really interesting. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> so like you always have to change your strategies and stuff. <clears throat> I was playing the other game the other day against uh it was like uh six six people were playing and like sometimes you can make teams but uh we we're all playing like by ourselves so mm-hmm. it's everybody versus each other. And it was a random board that uh, we were playing on, and none of us realized that this top left corner on the board was worth a hundred men, and it was just sitting there about eighty percent of the game. <laughs> 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 so That's finally, funny. somebody finally somebody took it and just just deleted like everybody. They just wiped out everybody. After Massacred they everybody <laughs> with, with their ginormous force. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's always fun. Like, I like the random boards now. They're pretty fun. Like, That's cool. Shuffling the contents or like even just looking at them, like not even playing them, just like hitting shuffle so you can see the different continents being shuffled around or randomly placed. It's pretty fun. Uh, you know, the <laughs> game that I, I was thinking about because I watched the the movie uh, Dune, but uh, there used to be a, like the, uh, a strategy game that they made Dune. It was just like, um, what was that one? Fuck, I forgot the name of it. But anyways, Doom was, was kind of interesting as a strategy game. Are, are you talking uh, the one where you had to capture all the salt mines and you yeah. built a little colony? Yeah. yeah, I love that game. Yeah. <laughs> it was dope. That spice. And you, and you had like the worms. <laughs> uh, Doom, the battle for salt, if anybody yeah. is. is 
Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <It was dope. laughs> yeah, yeah, I never read the fun, books, yeah, but yeah. I played the game like a, a shit ton when I was younger. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, me too. No, it was a fun, like, you, you'd take over the little, like, you'd have to mine your salt battles and, like, uh, take the, the salt mines and then use that salt to build your little colonies and stuff uh-huh. like that. Yeah, that's fun. Yeah, yeah that's fun. That was, that was <laughs> I don't remember what the, there was one too that was, it was very similar. I think it was, like, the same company that did it, but it was, like, of World War Two. Oh, no, the Axis and Allies. I guess that's what it was. Okay, okay. I don't know. Yeah, but it, it, it was like almost exactly like the same like game engine, but it was like different. <laughs> different you know. It's like we're going to change a couple things and charge you 20 more dollars yeah. for this game, guys. You're like, wait a minute. This is like the same game. <laughs> It's not the same game. Don't you see that building? No, that it's building a tank. Is blue. And the other one, it was like a spaceship. It's a tank. That's a, a rover. Like, oh, no, it's the same thing. <laughs> oh, man. I remember so too, there, it was like a Wolfenstein. You know, like the the first like uh, first person shooter games, and then like there was always just like different versions. But it was like the same exact like game engine. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Always, oh, dude. Oh. It's, it's kind of like uh, Mar- Mario or any. Yeah. Uh, just yeah. it's kind of like Mario. When you play any game that's like Mario, you're always like, wow, this is just Mario. Just yeah. With a different dude. <laughs> but you always want to play it though, right? Yeah, you, yeah. You still play that. Still play. Hell yeah. 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 But I wanted to uh, like get uh start getting on Joystream more and like uh, start commenting on some videos and seeing if maybe we can get somebody on a show with us. Yeah. It doesn't really matter who. Yeah, just uh, like uh, start getting um in that community and like let's see if we can make something happen. Yeah, yeah. I want like uh, uh like I don't know um where the best place to start but i guess like just the trend name page might be a good place to start it's not that big so like, yeah. i'm sure some of them will might respond like yeah we can come hang out like, just to see who's really on there if there's anybody worth talking to and that's true try to do stuff to <laughs> but yeah like uh, so i'm i'm trying to start doing that get on there a little more and comment on videos yeah i gotta start post, to... posting on there again too um I said, yeah, I have a yeah, bunch of like uh, uh, different videos that I could like post on there, um, but also to like what you said, like find other cool people doing stuff, you know? Yeah, yeah, that's what I want to like. I want to start uh, going through like actual going through the actual content, yeah. seeing what we can find, and like commenting on stuff and stuff. seeing if we can get people together and like do, do stuff. collaborative projects. Yeah. Like, yeah. Because, I mean, if you're making videos, you have some some creativity level and you're doing something already. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Games for me are good when you kind of engage in a kind of duality of experience of them. You spend some time buried in trying to win, but you realize that winning isn't the point. And then you step back and you see, oh my God, the process of doing it was so rich and so lovely. And games are toxic for me when we just get hyper-narrowed on the point system, and we never think about the larger outcome of the point system. We never think about what our life is like or what the activity is like under that point system. We never think about what follows from it. The big worry with the impact of highly gamified external systems is it encourages us not to step into a game and step back from it and think about the richness of the activity and whether it was worth it. What I'm worried about is those cases where the point system like blots out everything else from your universe and you don't see any of the other stuff 